is another wonderful Sunday morning, and we ought to be glad about it. Amen. Amen. We are excited about this. Another chance to say thank you to God for all that he has done. We are excited about a chance just to uplift and magnify the name of the Lord. For certainly he has been good to us. Amen. Not by anything, by our own personal strength or by our own personal uh, might, but simply by the grace and mercy of God, we have been afforded this another chance to be in this place one more time. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, how we thank you for this another chance to be able to come into this place to uplift and magnify your name. God, for you have been so good to us. God, you look beyond all of our faults, supplied us with all of our needs, and for that, God, we say thank you. But then, God, right now, how we pray and ask that you would forgive us for all of our unforgiven sins. God, that you would create within us a clean heart, renew within us the right spirit, God, that we may be acceptable unto you, that we may be able to sing and uplift and call upon your name right now in the name of Jesus. God, we invite your spirit to fall fresh upon us, oh God. We invite your anointing to fall upon us, God, that we can know that you are are forever standing by now god bless this service let it be that that you would have it to be let some heart be pricked that they may come running saying lord what must i do to be saved let something be said that we can take it and apply it to our everyday living that we may have a closer walk with you but then god wherever the devil may be Whatever he may be trying to do, God, we claim the victory over him right now in the name of Jesus. God, be with us as we go through this service. Let us feel your presence. Let us be renewed, knowing that we have you on our side. It's in the mighty, precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, uh, I don't know about you, but something about Sunday morning something about Sunday morning waking up knowing that I have one more chance to get it right I have one more chance to say thank you I have one more chance to gather with two or three amen that may know what God is able to do that may be able to share what he's done that may be able to testify that he has brought us this far and by that, we know that he'll never leave us, <laughs> nor, will he'll, nor will he forsake us. And we are just excited about this, another chance. I thank God for everyone that's here in this place. I thank God for everyone that is watching online. Listen, we're not here for any shape, form, or fashion. We're not here to let you see what we got on this Sunday. We're not here to just be seen on camera, seeing your faces. We're not here. For, we came to praise the Lord. Amen. We came to uplift his name. Amen. We came to give him what's rightfully his. And that's our hallelujahs. And that's our glory to his name. And that's us saying thank you. For all that he's Lord have mercy certainly God is good and we are thankful for everything that he is doing and that he has done listen we we gonna keep the fire going we gonna keep it going listen we are going to have our praise and worship our choir they're getting ready to come and bless us in song listen I invite you to stand on your feet I invite you to praise him with us. I invite you to have a good time because, listen, we don't know this might be our last. And if it's our last, we better not take it for granted. We better uplift and praise his name. We don't know what may happen if we leave out of this place. We don't know what the future may hold. So since you're here, since you're watching, since you're praise ye the Lord. Listen, I don't want no rocks crying out for me. I don't need you to praise them for me. I can praise them all by myself when I think of the goodness 
of the Lord and all that he has. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to have church. Hear ye them. I cry. Amen.
Just have to run on. Sometimes you can't stop in the middle of your race. Sometimes you have to keep pressing toward the mark. Sometimes you have to run on because if you stop, you might not see what the end's gonna be. Because if you stop, you have to keep on pressing to see what the end. If you're willing to keep running, how many of you want to see what the end's gonna be? <laughs> yeah. You can't stop. You might miss your blessing if you stop too short and you say, "Listen, I can't go on any further." Listen. Think about what God is doing in your life and you ought to be able to tell him, I'm going to run on in it. Just to see. I don't know what's in store over there. I don't know what's at the end of the road. But because how good God is, I've got to see. What he has for me, it's for me. And because it's at the end of the road. Something about Sunday morning. Something about the opportunity to just tell God how good he is. Even though we should be doing it every day. Something about being in the house brings about something different and reminding us how good God has been. And how good he is. And even more so how good he's going to be. For each and every one of us. Somebody knows how good God is.
<laughs> Ooh, somebody. <laughs> Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Something ought to ignite when you think about the goodness of Jesus. Yeah, oh, yeah. Look, it's gonna catch on in a minute. Yeah, oh, yeah. Come on, somebody, praise his name. about the breakthrough that they received. Somebody's thinking about what God is going to do. Somebody right now needs Somebody needs him to move right now. And when your praises go up, your blessings come down. Sometimes you have to praise him in spite of in the midst of Yeah Ain't nobody mad but the devil right now Listen, I, I think it's been a long time 
since we've allowed the spirit to move. Sometimes we just have to get out the way, let go, and simply let God. Amen. Amen. Listen, we are uh, <laughs> my God. Listen, y'all know I don't mind changing the program. So we're going to go ahead and let our choir come with our next selection. And we're going to go high from there. We'll do announcements later on. Amen. Because we don't want to quench this spirit. We want to let God have his way. Amen. Come on, choir.
so good you've been how many of you believe that so this morning how many of you can just so name two or three things that he's done for you just on so today just on this morning just at the fact so that if you have good. breath in your body, he's been so good. Yes, God. Just in the fact that your feet was able to strike the ground this yes. morning. He's been so Second Kings chapter six, verse number one through seven. Second Kings chapter six. We'll be begin reading at verse number one. I'm gonna ask when you find it if you would stand in honor reverence to the reading of the word of God, 2 Kings chapter 6, beginning at verse number 1. <laughs> Fire keep on burning. beginning at verse number one. You find it, say amen. You still look and say, Lord, help. All right. Reading from the NIV version, and it reads as follows. The company of the prophets said to Elijah, look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place there for us to meet. And he said, go. Then one of them said, won't you please come with your servants? I will, Elijah replied. And he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh, no, my Lord, he cried out. It was borrowed. The man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elijah cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Lift it out, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and took it. Eternal God, our Father, how we thank you. For this, another chance to hear a word from you. 
Now, God, how I pray that you would use me, that you would lower me down, that you may stand, God, that these, your people, may see you and not me. God, I pray that you would allow your words to flow through me, God, that I can speak to these, your people, oh God, that something can be said, that we can be strengthened by it, that we can walk closer with you, or someone can come running saying, Lord, what must I do to be saved? God, thank you in advance for what you've done. Thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Now, God, have thine own way like only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you don't allow, if you don't mind allowing me just for a few moments to talk from the subject, how to recover your spiritual edge to recover your spiritual edge. Here in this particular passage of scripture, we have a story that took place, they want to say around about the 8th century B.C. during the time of the kings when Israel was split into two kingdoms, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. But then after the prophet Elijah was taken away into heaven in a fiery chariot, the prophet Elijah began his ministry. Elijah had trained under Elijah for, they said it was to be about 50 years, preparing him for his ministry. But then Elijah was now doing the work and he was training other young prophets of God. And this meant what was meant by, and you look back at verse number one, which says the sons of the prophets. That's what it's meant. They were simply training under Elijah. And then what happened was this school of prophet had become so large, become so big that they had outgrown their current place of meeting and they needed to build something larger to accommodate their growing enrollment and and look it, it, it was something that they was getting excited about it was something that they was glad that was taking place but they realized how uncomfortable it was and then the anxious they they was anxious about it and they went and they talked to uh, Elijah their teacher and said listen please let us go to the Jordan and let us take some beams and let us do some work there and build a place that we may dwell. Elijah looked at them and he was excited as any, anybody would. Any parent, any God, guardian, anybody that has leadership over anybody. Listen, when one comes and say they want to go do something that is good, you tend to get a little excited about it. Why? Because you see growth. You see opportunity. You see what they're trying to do is something that is of good and according to what God would have them to do. Elijah's simple reply was, go. Go and do it. Get it done. Make it happen. And I can picture his chest being stuck out. But then they stopped and they realized and they, as he was sending him off, one of them said, listen, why don't you come with us? Why don't you come and, 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 and watch and, and see. Listen, were they asking him to come and pick up the logs? Were they asking him to come and pick up hammer and nail and do some work? No, they wasn't doing that. It was simply they wanted him to be in their presence while they were working. They wanted him as a motivational piece to let them know what's going on. As a matter of fact, I, I realized even growing up myself, even looking at my own children, even looking at some other people, listen, sometimes when you're doing something good and you think you might show out a little bit, you want the people around you that you look up to to be there to see exactly what you're doing. As a matter of fact, if you got kids and, and they play sports, they are proud when their parents are there in the stands. They are proud. They're happy. I see my boys when they're out there on the court. They look over. They get excited. But let them do something good in the game. 
They're going to look over and they're going to be excited. They're going to like, did you see that one? Did you see? And, 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 and it's all natural. Why? Because we aim to please those who have authority over us. And then and, and, and the good part is Elijah, when they asked him, do you want to come? Can you come with? He said, yeah, I'll come. I'll be there. I'll watch what's going on. I'll, I'll see what's happening. And, and they got there, and lo and behold, they took, they got straight to work. They were chopping down trees. They was doing what's necessary to build. But look at what happens. Trouble always comes when you're trying to do something good. Trouble always shows up. Some kind of hiccup always happens when, it, it, even if you've made the greatest of plans, Something is going to go wrong in the midst of it. This young man, one of the young prophets, he was there. He was cutting. Then he realized that his axe head had fell off. It fell off and it fell into the water. And he realized and he saw it and he stopped and he said, oh, no, listen, I've lost my axe head. I've lost my cutting edge. I've lost my, in other words, he lost his effectiveness to do the work that he had set out to do. And, and, and I stopped by just for a few moments this morning to ask the question, have we lost our cutting edge? Have you lost your spiritual sharpness? Have you lost your effectiveness and enthusiasm for doing the work that the Lord has called you to do? It's possible for us to lose it. Now, now don't get me uh, misunderstood. It's possible for us to lose it and not even know about it. It's possible for us to have lost our cutting edge, our spiritual edge, but let me remind you and share with you some good news that we can recover our spiritual edge. Just, just a few points here, and then we're going to get on out the way, but just a few points of how to recover your spiritual edge. First of all, the first thing that we must do, we must accept responsibility for losing our spiritual edge. What do you mean? How do I accept responsibility? Well, if you look back up at verse 5, it says, But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe fell into the water, and he cried out, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And that word in the King James, alas, literally means, oh no, in this context, oh no, I've lost something. And we've all cried out every now and again, oh no, I've lost something my glasses. Oh no, I've lost my wallet. I've lost my keys. And this young man cried out, oh, I've lost my axe head and it was borrowed. But the fact that this young man lost something and it did not belong to him even took a greater significance that he had lost something because now he realizes I've lost it, but not only have I lost it, it did not even belong to me. Problem comes when we, we, we start to play the blame game for the things that We've lost. We, we start to play the blame game on, on things that are happening. But if you, took, if you notice, he did not play the blame game. He didn't blame anyone else for what happened. He took full responsibility. He cried out, oh, no, I've lost my cutting edge. And it was borrowed. And, and, and let me share with you, it, when we lose our spiritual Edge. When we lose our cutting edge, it's our responsibility to own up to it and realize that it was not something that somebody else did. It was by my own actions that I lost it. We, 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 we hear people talk and we, we hear the gossip, we hear other things, we hear all the people start to play the blame game when they feel like that they, they've lost it. As a matter of fact, we've all heard someone try to point the, the, their finger at the preacher. 
Say, I lost my spiritual edge because the preacher sermons are boring. And they don't feed me. We try to point the finger of why we lost our spiritual edge because the church doesn't offer programs that fulfill my personal needs. We, 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 we try to point the finger and say, I, 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 my job got me working so much that I can't even attend church. We, we try to point the finger and blame everything else except ourselves. But the truth is, when we lose something, when we've lost our spiritual edge and we've accepted the full responsibility, what we must understand is that when we lose something, what's the first thing that we typically do? We typically, again, play the blame guy. I, listen, I know in my house, I've lost a whole lot of stuff, especially when it comes to electronic devices, keys, and all of these things, and, and, and I'll go through the house trying to find it. I'll ask my wife, has she seen it? I start asking the kids, have they seen it? I start, I did one of y'all touch my stuff. Do you have it in your room? Or I, 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 it, it, it's natural that we want to think that I'm, I'm too smart. And I, and I think I got... I know I don't have a good memory, so I'll just go and not even say that one. But, you know, some of us got pretty good memories. And we remember where we place things, but when you lose it, it's difficult to handle, especially if you've lost something. Watch this. Especially if you've lost something on the spiritual sense that God has entrusted you with. Some of us have some spiritual gifts that we just been sitting on. Some of us have some spiritual gifts that he's blessed us with to be able to have and to be able to use. But we have to understand even in those, they are borrowed. They're borrowed while we're here on this earth. They're borrowed while we're here. We're the stewards over them. And sometimes in the day-to-day -day course of living, in the day-to-day -day of just going about our way and we get, especially in the midst and in the coming, hopefully the coming to an end of a pandemic, a lot of people have lost their spiritual edge. It's easy to do. Why? We don't come to church. We hadn't been coming to church. We've been watching online. We've got comfortable. And then even the watching online, we get a little passive about that. And we forget, oh, it's about 1245. I forgot to log in to church. It happens. It's all a part of losing our spiritual edge. It's all a part of not fully being able to Get it all done. So somewhere in there, we have to accept the responsibility, which is what this man did. I've lost something that was borrowed. But then next, the next one is we must, watch this, we must acknowledge where we lost our spiritual edge. This, this verse right here about took me out. It says, verse 6 says, so the man of God asked him, where did it fall? And he showed him the place. He, he, so he cut off a stick and he threw it there. And, and that's when the miracle happened. He made the iron float. Elijah asked the man, show me where you lost it. And look at the actions of the young man, look at the action of the young. He, he looked, he didn't scratch his head. He didn't look confused. He didn't look dumbfounded. He knew exactly where he lost it. He pointed to ex the exact location. And that, again, is where the miracle happens. It only takes part one of the verse, but it's wonderful nonetheless to realize that if we remember where we lost it, if we remember where we laid it, if we remember where it was, we can go back 
and fire. Then Elijah, once he pointed it out, Elijah threw the stick. The iron began to flow. Listen, and that's when it happened. This, in order to recover something that you have lost, you have to go back to the place of where it was lost. Listen, sometimes we, when we lose things, we have to backtrack and go back and find exactly where we lost it. We, we, we backtrack. We, we re- we, some of us go all the way back to when we first walked into the house. You, you hit the door and you say, I turned left and I went into the kitchen and I played around in the kitchen. I piddle paddled here. And from there, I went to the restroom. From the restroom, I went to the bedroom. And then we backtrack and then you find it. But the crazy part is sometimes where you find it be the most easiest place. To discover it. And you, you're looking, you've looked, you looked in closets, you looked under clothes, you looked under beds, you looked at, you looked everywhere in the refrigerator, in the freezer, you looked all these places and the whole time it was sitting on the counter. Right in plain view. Those be the hardest things to find. Though, and, and, but, but the crazy part is, look at how easy it was for you to backtrack and find some of those things. And we have to acknowledge the fact that we lost it but we have to go back and find where it happened did it happen when i stopped reading my bible and praying is that where i lost my spiritual ed- did it happen when i stopped going to church regularly is that where i lost it did it happen when i got upset over what somebody had said Is that where it happened? Did it, did it, did it happen when, when I got mad at the pastor? for, for uh, Did it happen when I fell back into my sinful habits? Sometimes we, we get too complacent and we get caught up in what other people may be doing and then after that it changes into just going through the motions it changes into just us going through this this young man and, and, and I saw this it jumped out at me this young man was cutting down his tree he was going to work he was he was he was taking it out he was He was chopping away, and then somewhere amongst him swinging, he realized that his swinging was no longer effective. He realized that I'm hitting this tree, but nothing has happened. He realized that upon one of those swings, the axe had flown off, and it fell into the water. And, And what jumped out was, I'm glad that he was attentive. To what he was doing. I'm glad that he was attentive to how he was managing and, and he realized that he had lost his effectiveness and the first thing he did was cry out and say, oh no, I've lost my cutting edge. And sometimes we have to look at our own lives. Are we still just going through the motions? Are we still just showing up Sunday after Sunday? Are we still just reading or not being effective? Or have we lost our spiritual edge? It's, it's, it happens. It, it happens to, to the best of us. It happens to preachers. Preparing for sermons and just coming and just going through the motions Sunday after Sunday. It happens to to the choir members who just be singing and going through the motions. It happens to the ushers. It happens to the deacons. It happens to anybody that just sometimes the devil gets busy. Distractions happen and we find ourselves, oh, it's just another day. But we have to understand have to realize that we can recover our spiritual edge. We just have to acknowledge. As a matter of fact, verse 6 even goes a little further. 
There was a, a repentance in the midst of that. He openly confessed, God, I've lost it. I've lost it. It fell into the water. He accepted responsibility. He said, it's over there. And, I, and, 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 and the problem was where it fell. It was out of his reach. He couldn't get to it, but he knew where it was. So we have to accept the responsibility. We have to acknowledge, well, we've lost it, but here's the one. Here it is. We must take action to recover our spiritual edge. Listen, he threw, when he threw the stick out there, and the miracle happened of this iron floating in water, something that was already impossible, something that just simply couldn't be done. But the iron began to float. It was in waters that was too deep. It was in waters that was probably too muddy to be seen in. But the miracle happened when the axe came floating on the water. But watch what happens. Look, Elijah, he didn't go out there and get it. He didn't reach out his hand. He told him, listen, now you get it. Told him, pick it up for yourself. And the young prophet reached out his hand and, and what he was trying to teach him by having him reach down to recover it was, it was to remind him of the value of what he had lost. It was to remind him that you had lost something that belonged to somebody else and he had lost something which he could not afford to pay for. But perhaps even there's a deeper meaning if perhaps he was trying to teach him a variable, a very, very valuable lesson of the grace of God. This young man, he was powerless. There was no way that he could have recovered what was lost. I told you it was too deep. It was too muddy. He could not see. He would not have survived how to get down there to get to it. But by God's grace, he was able to recover his cutting edge. And Elijah wanted to teach the man, in order for you to keep going, in order for you to keep pressing, you have to value what's important. said this cutting edge was something that you needed. It was of importance. And, and I want to share with you that even sometimes our very own lives, our spiritual edge is extremely important. You, you want to know why sometimes you have to deal with certain circumstances for way too long? Chances are you may want to stop and say, have I lost my spiritual edge? Am I diving into the word of God and, and receiving that that I need to strengthen my walk? Have I lost my spiritual edge? Am I just going through the motions? But, but once you get to the point of accepting it, and accepting the responsibility, we must take action. We must dive in. We must take the action of showing the Lord, listen, Lord, I've been just going through this thing for way too long. You, can, you, you, you shouldn't blame it on anybody else but yourself. We, we, we blame it on the pandemic. The pandemic done had me at home and I just don't go to church like I used to. The pandemic done had me. I don't even read. The pandemic ain't stopped you from reading your Bible. The pandemic ain't stopped you from praying. The pandemic hadn't stopped you from calling on the name of the Lord. That was your fault. But we want to play the blame game. Sometimes we have to accept the responsibility. And when we've accepted it, we find out that a spiritual edge will come back. You'll find out that there's a different kind of pep in your step when you start to think about what God has done for you. It, it'll start to come back by, by you realizing it doesn't matter who's 
preaching or teaching, I'm going to praise the Lord anyhow. It doesn't matter. It, it'll start to come back when you just think and you read a, a, a passage of scripture and it jumps out and it jumps in your soul to help you deal with whatever you're in. You'll realize that, oh, my cutting edge is starting to come back. Why? Because I can walk with a smile when I know that I got all hell going on around me. Why? Because I can run even though I'm tired. I can, you'll, you'll realize it. It was these, it was these two men. These two men were in a competition, and one was big and muscular, tall stature. He was, he looked like he was very competitive. He looked like that he won plenty of competition. He was going up against another fellow that looked pretty normal. Didn't look like he lift no weights. Didn't look like he worked out. He was just your average fella. And he, he, he was in a competition against the other fella. And they, they said, we're going to have this competition and we're going to cut down these trees. And whoever gets to the other side first will be declared the victor. Well, he, the man that was judging, he got them lined up. They had their tools in their hand, their axe in their hand, and they was ready. The man blew the whistle, and the competition was off. Sure enough, the big man, the muscular, swole dude, he was swinging away. Trees were falling like crazy and he was chopping away and he, he, he was doing it consistently. He, he had stamina, he had endurance and he was swinging and chopping and trees were falling like crazy. The other fella, he, he started out and he was chopping and he, he was being pretty, pretty successful. He was moving quite, quite steadily and he was uh, kind of keeping up just a little bit. But the other fellow, well, they, they, they started to count him out. They said, oh, look at him. He's moving through these woods like it ain't nothing. Look at him. He, look at him go. The other fella, he would stop and take breaks. The other guy just kept going, never took a break at all. But only to find out that about midway through, the other guy was keeping up with the muscular fellow. The other guy was keeping up with the one who seemed to be more agile, who seemed to be like he was going to win by landslide, but the other guy started keeping up with him and he started to surpass him. The guy never stopped, never took a break, but every now and again that, that fellow would stop and he would take a break. Eventually, they got to the other side and once they got to the other side, the man looked who was strong and they got to the end and they looked at the pile of wood that had been established. That is what they was going to judge by and that's how they was going. And they looked at the strong fellows and they said, oh, you have a pretty impressive pal. You did a good job. You got through there swiftly. You, 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 you was getting through there pretty good and your pal looks good. But then they looked over at the regular fellow. They looked at his pile of wood and it was higher than the other fella. As a matter of fact, it was about three times higher than the other fellow. And, and he, he couldn't realize it. He couldn't fathom and He couldn't understand. How is it that your pal is so much higher than mine? When I know I saw you taking breaks along the way. I saw you sitting down over there. I never stopped. I kept going. I'm built. I'm, I'm made for this. The man looked at him. He said, listen, yeah, I saw you. And you were swinging with all your might. He said, I saw you. You was taking down them trees pretty good. 
But I saw after a while it took you more hits than normal to take down those trees. So I realized that your swinging wasn't as effective as it was when you first started out. Say, so yeah, you saw me sitting down taking a break. But what you failed to see was every time I sat down to take a break, so I was sharpening my axe head. So with every break that I was taking, I was sharpening my axe head. So when I started back up each time, I was dealing with a sharp blade and, and my swinging was much more effective than yours. Well, that story brought something to my attention. And I realized that sometimes even us as children of God, you remember when you first accepted him as your personal savior? You remember the spiritual sharpness that you had? You would beat people at the church before the evil person came to unlock the door. You was already sitting outside. When you first accepted him, you was telling everybody about the goodness of the Lord and what he's able to do. When you first accepted him, but somewhere in your going through the woods, somewhere in your going through the wilderness, somewhere in your going through, you was just going through the motion. You was telling yourself, oh, I know, Lord, I know the Lord's going to make a way. And you, 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 you forgot about the actions that was required of you. You was in there just a swinging away. You eventually would make it, but sometimes, sometimes it's all right to stop and sharpen your spiritual head. How do I sharpen my spiritual head? How do I? Listen, sometimes you have to sit down and just go into a quiet place and have a little talk with them. Sometimes you have to sit down somewhere and say, Lord, listen, you know what I'm going through. Listen, Lord, you understand the problems. You understand what I'm dealing with. Sometimes you have to stop and say, Lord, sharpen me. Build me up, God, that I can make it through my circumstance. Build me up, God, that I can keep on pressing when I don't feel like it. And when you have a sharp edge, you can press on even when you don't feel like it. You ever notice sometimes and you see people who you know that they're going through some, some psalms that are unbearable. You, you know that they've been lying on their bed of affliction for way too long. You know that they've been going through, but yet and still, they're still pushing. Yet and still, it's because they have stopped and had a little talk with them. It's because they've stopped and they read about what God is able to do. They've stopped and said, listen, I can't do it by myself. Where have you lost your spiritual edge? Remember where you lost it and go back and tell God I lost it right over here. I lost it over here when I was dealing with the choir. I lost it over here when I was dealing with the preacher. God, I lost it when I was at work and I went off on so-and-so. God, I lost it when I was driving down the street. And they cut me off and I had some words that weren't Christ-like. I lost it I lost it when my child, Lord have mercy, was being disobedient. Lord, I lost it. Here's the one that hurts. I lost it, God, when I stepped too far away from you. 
And that's the one that hurts us the most. The one where we, 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 uh, we, we know where we've lost it. We just have to go back and get it. That's what, when we have to lean and depend on him and say, God, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Where have I lost it? Show me where you lost it. And that, 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 that one right there, then I'm going to sit down. He's, he said, show me. Where you lost it. Some of us know exactly where we've lost it. Some of us know exactly where we need to be telling the Lord, Lord, I lost it right over there. Can you fix it? And watch him. (laughs) Watch him throw a stick at it. Watch him do something miraculous. Watch him restore and lift your joy back up. Watch him lift it back up, and once he lifts it up, that's when you have to start moving. That's when your action comes in. Lord, do I want to restore it? Do I want to get back right, or am I okay being where I am? Lord, do I want to see and receive the joy and your happiness, or am I okay being in misery? And How to recover? Spiritual edge. Tell God, I'm sorry. I'm going to accept the responsibility. I'm not going to play the blame game. I'm not going to tell <laughs> what, other, what everybody else was doing. Because it doesn't matter what everybody else was doing. What matters is what I was doing. What matters is my relationship with him. What matters is how I'm communicating with him. What matters is how he's seeing me. So accept the responsibility. Acknowledge where you've lost it, but then take the action of recovering your spiritual edge. And and, and know that he wants you to recover. That's the God we serve. That's the love that he has for us. He wants you to recover it. He wants you to feel his joy, feel his presence. He wants you to make it through. He wants you to make it through whatever it is you're going through. If you've been chopping and you've been swinging, stop and look and say, have I lost my cutting edge? The door is open. There may be one who may be saying, I've lost my cutting edge. I've lost my spiritual edge. I've lost something that was borrowed. Lord, you blessed me with it. You gave it to me. And now I'm realizing even more so that what you bless me with is something that I need to be able to cut down the traps and the snares of the enemy. I'm realizing right now, God, that what what I need is something that you lend it to me that helps give me strength when I need it most. It helps give me a fighting edge to say regardless of what's going on, I can still make it regardless of what's happening. We extend this privilege to you to say, listen, I'm coming, God. Restore unto me. Renew within me. Create within me. can be closer to you. Then if it says that you need prayer, we extend that to you as well. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Listen, with every head bow, every eye close. Every head bow, every eye close. If that is you, 
we want to acknowledge the fact. We want to know, we want you to know that we're praying for you, that we're accepting you, and the privilege is extended to you. So if that's you, simply just raise your hand with every head bowed, every eye closed. Amen. 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 I see you. Amen. I see you. Amen. I see you. Yes, Lord, I see you. My God. Oh, bless.
I wish I wish sometimes if you if you've paid attention to news if you paid attention to social media if you paid attention to affairs of this world of this nation of our city sometimes in our very own home You look and you say, listen, I, I don't even know how we can handle this. I don't even know what can be done. I don't even know how we can make it through. But there is one thing that we can still do. We can still say, I need you. Yeah. Every hour I need it. But then right here, oh bless. Listen, you don't even have to get specific. Oh bless. I don't care what you do, just oh bless. You fix it, oh bless. Just do it, oh bless me now. Right now, my son. Savior. Listen, y'all realize we ain't say nobody else. We said, my Savior. I can't wait on the world to fix it. I can't wait on humans to fix it. I can't wait on the government to fix it. But right now, my son, Savior, Listen, I know where to go, too. I come <laughs> I come to Listen, I'm glad ain't none of y'all names me to the Oh 
the things that he has done. You ought to be able to look back and just say, to God. to God be the glory for the peace. not anything that I've done but for for the thing And you ain't did nothing, it's for the things that he has done. Amen. On the night, amen. Of our Lord's betrayal. Listen, if you need to be serviced by an usher and you have not received your communion cups amen simply raise your hand and our ushers will make sure that you have that as we get ready to prepare for our communion that because they was getting ready to do something that commemorated the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let a man examine himself. And when, not if, but when, you find that that is not pleasing, you should pray and ask for forgiveness unto the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, how we thank you for how you sent your Son who came and gave his life that we may have life and have it more abundantly. God, we thank you for the love that you have for us by sending him. 
we thank you for his obedience and carrying out what needed to be done that we may have a better communion with you. But now, God, as we realize that we are filthy rags, we are wretches undone, God, we've fallen short in so many ways. God, we ask that you would forgive us for we have sinned. God, we ask that you would clean us up as you see fit that we may be acceptable unto you that we may not eat or drink damnation to our own soul not discerning you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And after he had prayed and asked for forgiveness, he took the bread and he had broken. And as he was breaking it, he took it and he said, this represents the body which is broken for you. For as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And they did all eat together. Likewise, in the same manner, he took the cup. And before they had supped, he said, this represents the blood that would be shed on Calvary for the remission of sin. For as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And they did all drink together. Amen. Afterwards, they went out to a Mount of Olives to pray. We do not have a Mount of Olives to go to, but we do have our various destinations. Amen. Amen. Listen, just before we get out, we're going to have our announcements, and then I'm going to ask the Pastor McNeely would come uh, after our announcements and have his words with us. Amen. Let me get over to it. Amen. All right. Uh, team up to clean up. Amen. We are scheduled for May 15th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. The sign up for it will be on our website this week. Amen. We are asking that you would sign up so we can get a good head count so we can know what uh, everything that we need to have here uh, as well as uh, believe that we're going to try to see if we can have some refreshments and some goodies here to keep our strength and energy up so that we can help beautify our church. Amen. Amen. So our team up to clean up event, which is we're going to come and just kind of spruce up the place a little bit. Amen. 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 So that we can continue to be clean, sanitized, and we just want to have it looking nice in here as we come and start back even further with our worship experiences. Amen. Let us continue to pray for all of our known sick and shut in. We are still in prayer for Sister uh, Sister Bridget Cooper, amen. We're praying that God continues to touch her and move upon her in a mighty way, amen. And all of those names that we do not have, we praise and lift you up just the same unto our Father which is in heaven, amen. This is a new month, amen. We're in the month of May. So anybody with a May birthday, let me just raise your hand. Let me see if you got a, amen, Sister Johnson in the back, amen. I, she, amen, we got Sister Hayes over there, amen, amen. Listen, we thank God and praise God with you for just another chance to see another year, amen, another day's journey. And we are excited and we praise God with you just the same. Amen. I do have a thank you card here, and y'all bear with me. Um, Greater El Bethel Missionary Baptist Church and Dr. William McNeely, in our time of loss, you have given us comfort and healing through your kind words and gestures. Amen. This is from the family of uh, Arthur Ray Shannon and uh, Juanita. I'm not even going to mess that up. Sister Juanita. Wickware, 
All right, there we go. <laughs> amen, amen. We received a thank you card. They laid a loved one to rest, I believe, on this past week, and they uh, we represented there with our uh, resolution, and we are excited, and we are continuing to lift that family in prayer as well. Amen. I don't have anything else. Just, all right. All right. Pastor McNeely says wave. He said, listen, it's just good to see him in the house. Amen. Amen. We're just excited and glad that he's here. Y'all keep praying for him. Keep lifting him up. And we know that God is able. Amen. Let's all say it. Let us pray. Now, let's hear them. <laughs> for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, but most of all, God, what our hearts have felt. Now, God, be with us as we go into this another week. We pray that you lead and guide us, oh God, that we can feel your presence each and every day. Now, have thine own way. Keep us is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.